What's going on, guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. It's Saturday, so time to go over my favorite plays this week. Another underdog sponsored video. They're going to sponsor all the Saturday videos for the rest of the season, so we can keep doing these prop videos. We had a rough time in week three, but almost hit on one of the 21 bets. I was actually the Bengals side that let us down, which you know wasn't something I thought I'd say. I thought, you know, going into a bet that had Bengals and Jets at the Jets side would be the one to you know not hold up their end, but it was actually the Bengals. So through uh, three weeks now, we are two and two on the 20 to one bets. We are 22 and 13 with the overall props, which is still an extraordinarily good rate. We will try to hit on another 21 this week. Again, not easy. My plan was to try and hit on one all season. We've already done two, so don't expect a ton of them, but I really like this week's. And if the game can pop off, I think we're going to have uh, some fireworks in this one. So go over that one first. Um, one thing I want to mention is I only have one this week. I had two last week. If I think of another 21 that I like, I will post it on the website. So there's like a um, there's like a header on the props page that has the 21 bet. Uh, you guys can see that starting on Wednesdays if I like it. Usually Thursdays, I'll kind of lock it in because I don't have all the bets up. But you can look on the website and see that. I'll add another one if I do like that. But this week, we're going to be stacking the Jaguars at Eagles game. For the past few years, this has been kind of a stay away game. I mean, the Jaguars have been just an absolute dumpster fire in recent seasons, and the Eagles have either also been, or they've had no real upside that we could stack, because especially last year, they were such a run-heavy team, it was like, you know, what are we really taking for a game that's going to pop off? This season, it has been completely different. Both teams rank above average in pass rate over expectation. Both teams rank above average in pass rate over expectation allowed on defense. Jacksonville ranks seventh in situation neutral pace of play. The Eagles rank second. Jacksonville has run the ninth most plays per game. The Eagles have run the seventh most. Jalen Hurts ranks first among all quarterbacks in pass EPA per play. Trevor Lawrence ranked sixth. Trevor Lawrence is actually first in pass success percentage. Jalen Hurts is sixth. Jacksonville, their defense is first in a rush defense DVOA, and the Eagles and Jaguars rank fourth and second in pass offense DVOA. And then finally, the Eagles have scored 24 points back to back weeks. You're like, oh, that's not that great. But they've dominated so much in the first half scoring all of those points. So in the first half of weeks two and three, they've scored 24 and 24 points. In the second half of both weeks, they've combined for zero points because they've allowed like seven and eight points. They haven't needed to do anything, though there's been a lot of talk around the team that they need to keep their foot on the pedal. They need to, you know, continue the success into the second half and not play passive. So we can expect that to be the case this week. And I mentioned that last point because, you know, contrary to what you might think, what people might think, Jacksonville, like I laid all those stats out earlier, Jacksonville's been a really good offense. They've been a pace up offense. They've been a pass heavy offense. Like they've been good this season. And if Jacksonville can keep up and force the Eagles to, you know, remain pass heavy, to remain at least just like non-passive, basically, we don't want the Eagles going into a shell and just running the ball the whole second half. We don't want that happening. And if Jacksonville can keep, keep pace, both teams are going to play fast. They're going to throw the ball plenty. And this game has a lot of upside. It's not a lock to go off. No game ever is. Even when we have elite offenses, bad defenses, things happen in the NFL. And especially, you know, with the Eagles having one of, if not the best defenses in the NFL, like it could absolutely be the case where it's like, you know, the Eagles perform really well and then Jacksonville does struggle. That could happen. But we're taking this 21 bet because if Jacksonville keeps up, we're going to hit. So here's the bet. Jalen Hurts over 305 and a half total yards. So that's counting passing plus rushing. And I guess if he has some receiving yards and a trick play, that should theoretically count as well. A.J. Brown Sr., he had a kid this week who's A.J. Brown Jr., so now we have A.J. Brown Sr. over 75 and a half receiving yards, Devonta Smith over 62 and a half receiving yards, Trevor Lawrence over 245 and a half passing yards, Christian Kirk probably has the best matchup of all of the Jaguars wide receivers over 60 and a half 
receiving yards. If you want to throw in a different one, you're like, eh, I don't love Christian Kirk. I don't know why you wouldn't, but Zay Jones at 44 and a half. Again, I'm taking the Christian Kirk side. Um, but if you are a Zay Jones fan, you want to throw that in instead of Kirk, I'm totally fine doing that because uh, I know we have a lot of Zay Jones fans out there. Aside from that one, so that's the 21 bet. I like all that. And I would play those all together. Theoretically, if you just wanted to play the angle of uh, the Eagles are good, they're going to dominate, and maybe you don't think Jacksonville keeps up, you could do like uh, Hertz and maybe A.J. Brown, like something like that, just paired together and then leave the rest alone. But I wouldn't take too many one-offs. And I definitely wouldn't take Jacksonville. Don't take the Jacksonville side and then not take the Eagles. The Eagles are not going to be completely stopped by the Jaguars' defense, especially with the Eagles playing at home. And so if you're going to play Jacksonville, you have to play the other side as well. I would take all five together, do the 21. Other ones I like though, these can just be played as one-offs. Damian Pierce, over 57 and a half rushing yards. The Chargers rank 30th in yards per carry allowed on defense. Joey Bosa is now on the IR. Uh, Pierce now ranks eighth among all running backs and percent of team carries. He's seen his carries increase from 11 to 15 to 20 in week three. And the spread is only five points. I think a lot of people are going to assume that the Chargers are going to score on every drive. They're going to dominate, you know, Houston. But, you know, there's a chance that this game is at least close. Now, I don't think the Texans are going to win. But I also didn't think the Chargers would be as mediocre as they have been on offense this season. Houston has allowed less than 20 points per game. The Chargers have scored less than 20 points per game so far. I know Houston's 0-2-1, but they've lost by a combined 10 points, and both those games were on the road. So I at least think there's a chance that this game is like within a score, maybe like 9 to 10 points throughout the whole game, or at least the vast majority of the game to a point at which the Texans can still operate their normal offense. I think it's less likely the Chargers go out there and are immediately up like 20 nothing, And then they have to throw it every play. And then Damian Pierce is just not going to hit this. I think it can remain at least like remotely close. And that's really all we need to happen. He's going to have, you know, 17 to 18 carries in one of the best matchups to running backs. And so 57 and a half, that's too low of a line. Another one I like is Drake London, over 56 and a half receiving yards. Cooper Cup ranks first in target share over three weeks, commanding just under 35% of the Rams' targets. But Drake London ranks second, which is under 34% of the Falcons' targets. He's averaging 71 receiving yards per game, and that's with games against the Saints, Rams, and Seahawks, which, you know, Saints, really good defense, Rams. Really good defense. Can't say as much about the Seahawks, but like, you know, he hasn't played the worst defenses in the NFL over three weeks. Now, the reason the line is so low is because of the potential pace of the matchup. Uh, both the Falcons and the Browns are perfectly willing to play slow. Both teams would prefer to run the ball. And so even though the total is high, we could see a game where both teams are successful running the football. They're doing so as much as they please. It's a lot of run plays. It's a lot of plays where it's like they get into the red zone and they convert because neither defense is all that terrifying, especially in run defense. And so we could see a game where the clock just continues to drip. And even though we're approaching, you know, 45, 48, 50 points in the game, we're not seeing like offensive fireworks through the air. But even if that remains true, London is the clear focal point of this passing offense, and there's nothing about the matchup, like I said before, that scares me. And even if the Falcons run less than 60 total plays, I have them projected to run 59 plays, which would have been tied for the third fewest of any team last season. So like 59 is not very many plays in a game. He should still see, even with that projection, around eight to nine targets and be fairly efficient. With those looks, they have a really, really good play-action passing game. And again, the matchup is of no real concern to us. I like the over in his 56 and a half receiving yards. Again, Drake London. I also like the over on Javonta Williams, 52 and a half rushing yards. Maybe this is just one that I'm on, like in denial on, you know, maybe Nathaniel Hackett really does think that giving like 14 high leverage snaps to Mike Boone is the best way for them to win football games and to you know, increase from their 14.3 points per game. But I just can't imagine that this usage holds. And even if it does, that's why I like this bet. Even if it does, 
Williams is going to see around 14 to 16 carries. And he's probably going to be pretty darn good on those carries for his entire career. He's been an efficient running back. That's never been the problem. And I'm only projecting Denver for 63 total plays. That's three less than their average so far this season. I'm projecting them to like maintain about their average for their rush rate. And I even gave Mike Boone a carry. I don't even think he has one yet this season. I gave him a carry just for fun. Like even if Mike Boone comes in, takes a carry, takes some snaps, we see fewer plays than their average. Like even projecting all of that, he still projects to go over his 52 and a half rushing yards because he's just good at football. He's a good running back. If they give him his normal workload, he should hit the over. And part of me thinks they cannot look at what they've done so far and think, hmm, you know what the problem is, is we're not giving Mike Boone enough snaps. No, the problem is obviously that you're not giving Javonta Williams enough snaps. I think they see that. I think they give him more workload this season, and I think he hits the over. The final over we'll go over today is Richie James, over 7.95 fantasy points. And this one just comes down to bodies, which it sometimes just does. Sterling Shepard, out. Wandale, I haven't confirmed it, but I'm pretty sure he hasn't practiced yet. I don't think he's playing this week. Galladay, he's cooked. He's going to be out there, but he's, he's terrible at football at this point. Uh, Davis Stills, not good. You know, like, it's just like they don't have anyone. Richie James is their best wide receiver on the roster right now. And, you know, they can't just give it to Saquon every play. Like, they're going to give it to Saquon on the ground through the air. They're going to try and give Saquon as many touches as possible. But there will be plays where they simply cannot give the ball to Saquon Barkley, can't give it to backup running backs. They're going to need to use their wide receivers. They don't really have that many tight ends. They have like Bellinger, but they don't have tight ends that are going to command targets. Like Richie James is their best option in the passing game. All he has to do is hit eight half PPR points. That feels easy. That feels easy for him to get. I'm projecting him for 10.7. That means he should hit, you know, eight and over, well over 50% of the time. Uh, and also, you know, he won us our bet on that nice like 16 yard reception on Monday night. So, you know, I feel like we got to stick with him until he lets us down. So those are my favorite bets this week and a 20 to one that we can all root for again in week four. If you want to see more, I think I have maybe like 30 on the website. You can check that out, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. If you want to see the lines before they move, because with how many people are watching these videos, betting the lines when they come out, they're going to shift. And not only for us, like we're betting lines we think are good. Obviously, if we think they're good, other people do too. And so they're going to be bet throughout the week. And so when it gets to you guys on Saturday, they might be a little bit higher. And so if you want to see them when they come out on Wednesday, on Thursday, check the website. You'll have easy access to that before everyone does and bets them in this video. So good luck this weekend to everyone. That, my friends, is in this one. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, how about hitting the like button? And how about subscribing to the channel if you're new here? Thanks for watching.